Here we are on another newish home, 15 years old. It's got ducted heating and evaporative cooling. The customer's been complaining about expensive energy bills and coughing while the ducted heating system is running. Energy is getting more expensive and we really need to get better building stocks in Australia. Let's have a look at this. All right, so Jamie, this is, I think, so common in Australia. Ducted heating return, lack of connectivity of the ductwork for the gas ducted heating or refrigerative cooling or heating system to this plenum. It's got to stop. This is just, this has to stop. We see it all the time, but mm. every time I see it, I'm still speechless, John. It's a gas guzzler. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually fix this installation by sealing off this plenum and we're going to extend the duct from the ceiling and connect it so what will happen is it will completely recirculate all the the warm air back in through the system connect it to the duct and make the system more efficient john so what do you think has actually happened here why hasn't the the guy who put the duct in because it seems like it's short and it can't actually connect to a to any sort of flat surface up there, isn't it? It is, and it, it's actually drawing from in the roof space. So you've got this duct at the top of this, this whole plenum, and what it's doing is, okay, we're pressurizing the, the house with the centralized system on, and some of it's making its way up, but what it's doing is it's also drawing from the sides of the open ceiling mm -hmm. up into the return. So it, it's just completely not connected, centralized, and- Just poor workmanship. Poor, Shocking. it is just, it is sad. Mm. So, so out of sight, out of mind as well. No one can see it. And building inspectors don't even look to check this. No, so look guys, if, if, if you're uh, getting high gas bills, you, your system's not turning off because obviously this system's running at 100% constantly trying to recirculate. If your system's running all the time, it's not, it's not turning off. You can't maintain a constant temperature. Um, really have a look at your return system to make sure that it is connected. So we've just started the ducted heating system and because this return is sucking in so much air from the roof, it's pressurizing the house and it's just making all the, the warmer conditioned air go straight up through the evaporative cooler. Okay, so here we are. We've got massive interconnectivity of conditioned space to up in the roof space. We've connected up a device here to measure temperatures. Jamie, where are these probes going? We've set up four probes. We've got one inside the roof space to get the temps inside the roof. We've got one inside the actual return duct up high, which we know it's not connected to the actual return grill. We've got a probe inside the room to get the surface temps inside. And then we've got a probe set down low, probably about a meter off the ground inside the return system, just to understand the temps of the airflow recirculating through the system. So Jamie, we've been running this now. It's quite slow. We still haven't reached 21 degrees. Uh, it was quite cool when we first started it. We're getting a warmer temperature at the bottom of the return because clearly a lot of the heat that's been produced by the ducted heating system is making it back to the return, or some of it is at least. And the house is just dawdling at around about 16, 17 degrees. Yeah, th this is clearly not a functioning return. This data is actually helping us understand that. So let me just reinforce this. The temperature up in the roof is basically the same temperature of the air going into the ducted heating return. 17 degrees and 16.5 degrees, they're very similar, 17 degrees roughly. So Jamie, when we ran this test before, there was a greater temperature differential between the temperature inside the return duct and the plenum that is taking the air from the house. Now they're both sitting at 19.5 degrees around about. The system has been running for a lot shorter period of time than when, when it was running with that complete disconnectivity. So it's pretty clear that the ducted heating system is heating already heated air. So it should get warmer faster and stay more stable. 
by the results, I think we can clearly say that that's the case now. Mm. Let's roll into an air tightness test now so that we can compare the air tightness test with and without this ducted heating return resolved. And to keep in mind that there's elevated pressures from a gas ducted heating system trying to draw air into it. So any leaks in this area are gonna be really exaggerated from an energy efficiency perspective. Let's do this air tightness test. Okay, so this ducted heating system has made this home go from an ACH or air change an hour at 50 pascals from 28 all the way down to 20 air changes an hour at 50 pascals. This is a huge improvement to the performance of this home. It's also the worst place to be having extreme air leakage occurring because this is where elevated pressures are occurring for the ducted heating system from a health perspective, also an energy efficiency perspective. So we need to get these issues solved in all of our current building stock, but also any new builds can't have this issue occurring. I can't stress it any more than what I can say it already so many times.